All right, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. I've got another interview for you today with a uh, aviation professional. This is a good friend of mine from years past. Uh, we have Drew on the line here, so say hello to everybody out there, Drew. How's it going, everybody? I'm Andrew. Right. Andrew Fuller officially, but uh, Drew is my nickname. Yeah. Okay, we'll go by <laughs> Drew today. So Drew is joining us. He is a corporate flight dispatcher. We're going to talk all about his career and all sorts of different things with you know, with, with uh, regard to that, if anybody out there is curious about this career track in particular, and as I'd mentioned in the last couple of videos, you know, a lot of the purpose of me doing these these interviews here is I want to expose you guys and girls out there to just the, the whole abundance of options and opportunities that you have in the field here in aviation. You know, there's just so, so many different things you could do with yourself if your interests take you off in a different place. So I, I, I like talking about this stuff, and hopefully this is relevant to somebody out there that might be considering this career track. We can kind of get into that. So before we get started with the interview, though, if you like what you're hearing and seeing, please hit that like button, hit subscribe, leave comments down below, and it uh, just helps me keep the channel moving forward here. So thank you so much if you've done so already. So without any more talking, Drew, we'll just jump in and we'll start with your interview here. So the first question that I've got for you is just to tell us in general about your aviation interests and how exactly they got started in your life. Yeah, I, geez, I was uh, like a lot of people, you know, I was a young kid and uh, I mean, I was really young. I mean, probably four or five years old. I grew up near an airport in Ohio, uh, southwestern Ohio, and actually Dayton, Ohio, which is, of course, where the Wright brothers are from, so kind of a funny little uh, tie-in there. But uh, anyway, I, like I said, we were below the approach for the six left and right at uh, D, uh, the KDAY, basically, and so I uh, just really had an interest as a kid watching the airplanes as they'd fly over my head, and uh, the first time I took an airline flight, I think I was about four or five, and I still remember the airplanes I was on and uh, the airline where I was going. And uh, I had, it's kind of funny, I also had a lot of family members. Uh, my sister wanted to do it. My dad wanted to be a helicopter pilot at one time. My grandfather, my mom. My mom ended up working for a couple airlines throughout right. uh, her career. And that exposed me even more uh, because we moved around a lot because of my father and then my mom working for an airline uh, pretty much most of the her career when I was, uh, since I'd come into the world. And so we traveled a lot, basically. Okay. So got to, you know, fly all over the, the country and stuff a lot. Um, you know, flying to Dallas for the, for lunch on the, you know, Saturday was something that we got exposed to. So for me, it was something that I grew up with the interest and it stayed with me, uh, through elementary, middle, high school, all that. So when it came time to uh, graduate high school, I was pretty set forth on, I mean, I was, I was you know, knew what I wanted to do in, in some capacity, flying and dispatching. And uh, it was kind of funny, the other area of aviation, uh, meteorology, it was also an interest of mine. I really started picking up in high school. And uh, so those were the two things I was really looking at studying. And I kind of was able to intertwine those uh, into my career and, and uh, went, to San Jose, yeah, went to San Jose State. Uh, aviation major, uh, started flying. I got my private uh, pretty, about my first semester or two in, I think, started flying. And uh, kind of just took me down. I mean, uh, you know, I went down the dispatch path for the most part so far, but uh, I'm still, still a licensed and recreational pilot right now. Okay. And uh, here we are today. Okay. Well, great. So you know, we're going to get into all that and talk a lot more in depth about that specifically. But just to, <laughs> to reiterate, it sounds like you were, you were similar in the sense to a lot of us that you had this very early from a kid sort of passion in aviation and you were, you stuck with it and it was something that you knew you wanted to work in this field, you know, from a very young age. And I, I think that's such a cool thing for a lot of us that are in the, the aviation space here is like a lot of times it starts like way back at a very early age. I mean, could you even like pinpoint in your mind, like how old you were maybe like, or was it just something you always love and you don't remember anything else or. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think I may have, commented on, on my opening there, but uh, I was, I, you know, I, 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 from, you know, we pretty much don't remember a lot when we were kids, you know, our parents told us when we were going through potty training or whatever, and we have no recollection from that time in our life because we were so young, but I do know uh, early on, like I said, probably two, three, four years old, I mean, just where my brain, like watching airplanes and getting to go out to the airport and, uh, and that, just having a, uh, just for that time in my life, being so young, the only things I really, I mean, there's things that, you know, stick with you, maybe certain trips you did or certain times with family. But for me, aviation and knowing that I always really had a interest in airplanes, even from being a, you know, three, four year old, okay. um, that's, I, I know it was there and, uh, you know, just kind of, like I said, it carried on with me and I expanded it as I got older. 
you know, that, that interest stayed with me. Excellent. And that's cool. And it's just, it's so neat to hear people talk about these passions in this regard. And once again, like, I think that a lot of us aviation types are lucky in the sense that, you know, early on what you want to do, you, you have something to drive towards, you have something to follow, you know, in your life. And and that's unique. You know, I think there's a lot of other peers of mine, I could say that they've just gone down to any given career trackway just because they thought it was going to make them, you know, an adequate income or yield them, you know, some other things in life they were looking for, which is totally okay. But it's just, it's nice to have a career that you're passionate about. You have somebody you love and you're, you're able to make a living doing it. And that's, that's really cool. So, um, let's see, we'll move on to the second question. So just, I wanted to, or I wanted you drew to try to describe to everybody out there watching just how did, you know, how did this whole decision to go down the, the, flight dispatch route manifesting your life and you know how did you arrive at that career decision or, or you know figure out okay you know this is like i want to do this you know for you know the, you know, the yeah. future of your life there yeah that's a good question i, I think yeah it's i think we all you know a lot of us and even some of the people i work with some of our mechanics for example i know a couple of them kind of had this story where you know, most people involved are, are interested in aviation. It's the flying, you know, because that's the first thing you think of when you think of airplanes and when you're traveling. I mean, you know, you think of the pilots flying the airplane. I mean, predominantly, obviously. I mean, there's, but I think as you get exposed to other areas of the industry and whatnot, you see, oh, there's other things, you know, like I said, mechanics, for example. And, you know, some people, flight attendant, you know, is, 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 something that they really wanted to do and uh, ticket agents. I mean, throwing bags on the airplane and, and whatnot. I mean, there's a, there's a plethora of things obviously in the industry. I think for me, the, what the reason dispatch came about came about was, you know, I think I mentioned it earlier where meteorology started becoming, I was always interested in weather and air, you know, on airplanes. Those are probably my two, the, I mean, minus sports and stuff, but these out of things I wanted to do with my life, uh, forecasting and, and looking and keeping people out of dangerous weather and airplanes and aviation were the, were the big, you know, it was like the top interest in my life. So I think, and being in some pretty scary flights myself, even as a kid in really bad weather, started gravitating me toward weather and keeping people safe. So I think for me, starting to look at something like dispatch, where you kind of have, you really get a, you, you get almost everything that aviation has to offer. There's so much that you're involved in that you're kind of managing for each flight. And so for me, that really became something I gravitated towards. Um, again, the, because you're, you're running the flight plan. So you have to know what the pilots have to know when it comes to, you know, running, generate a flight plan and the performance of the airplane and how to fly that instrument flight plan. And then, you know, there's weather concerns out there and we have payload that the ramp agents have to look at all the bags and everything going on. And we have to make sure that we're not overweight and, um, you know, the, the airplane can perform the way it needs to. And um, obviously we're dealing with maintenance and is there a maintenance issue where we have to file the flight plan to a certain altitude or whatnot, you know, lower or other restrictions. So it, it's, it's something that, again, I gravitated towards and, and I, I got an internship when I was uh, right out of high school, basically, with uh, what was then Jeppesen. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's now a Boeing company, as most everybody knows. I mean, the Jefferson name still kind of ta is still kind of around, but it's predominantly Boeing now. But anyway, uh, that was something. Uh, getting an internship there, I got exposed even more to to like the flight planning aspect because there were flight planners there that were running, generating flight plans and filing for aircraft all over the world. And uh, when came time to graduate, I, I stuck with that internship and got exposed to many different parts of corporate aviation. And uh, when it came time for me to graduate college, uh, there was a position that opened up which in flight planning, which was where I really wanted to work to get exposure. And fortunately, the, the timing also worked out. And you know, my work experience as an intern kind of helped me get there. And uh, that really kind of carried me into dispatching. Uh, I think that was kind of the, the open door that got me even more exposure to a full-time position in that field. And then I carried it on even further to where I'm at today. Okay, excellent. Um, well, one thing that really strikes me about everything you're describing is just one, well, a couple elements you had mentioned there about, you know, how I think, you know, sometimes you, you kind of dabble in little things here and there in aviation, but, you, you know, some for sometimes, for some of us, we, we kind of evolve and you adapt and you find other things that maybe are more appealing to you for whatever reasons those are. And it's okay to, you know, for anybody that's getting into this field, like find your place and find what, what you enjoy and makes you happy. And, it, and one thing, like I said, that I gather from everything you're saying, Drew, is like for somebody out there that really might, 
like this element of let's say like problem solving or having like you know the the top down look at everything that's going on in any, any given place i mean if you picture like the pilots and the people like in a plane like they're just they're just one small part of this big picture but then you have like somebody as a dispatcher that's like looking down strategically on top of the whole big picture and it's just it's a whole different skill set and it's you know if, if that is something that appeals to you guys and girls you know it's this is a great way to to exercise those skills or to have like we say this this different you know responsibility in the big picture of moving airplanes around wherever they're going you know in the world so it's just it's something that like i said it strikes me because i think that dispatch capacity is unique for all those reasons you laid out there drew and i i just think it's neat and that, that might appeal to some people out there so uh let's see um next question i have for you drew is can you tell us about what somebody can expect in your career and what i mean by that is let's just say like every day when you go into work like what what can they expect to do like what are they doing and you know their their average day at work yeah so i'll uh yeah that's a good question i'll and i'll I'll preface that by i am a dispatcher for a corporate you know part 91 private uh, general aviation uh, flight department so we are a major uh i'll say major tech company so our, our our business is you know technology and certain things but we have a fleet of aircraft that we operate for the executives and board members and whatnot to, to safely get them to meetings and conduct business, basically. And you'll find that there's a lot of major companies out there um, that have their own corporate flight departments to, for many reasons. And some of that's safety and security of the CEO and um, that they're required to fly on the company airplanes. And so, so for me, it's going to be a little bit different than, you know, what other dispatchers in the field might, might see. But uh, I mean, in, in the corporate world, we are predominantly the first and foremost, probably the role of the of the corporate aviation dispatcher is also going to be a scheduler. And that's, you know, a day in our, our, I mean, a typical day for us would be getting emails or calls from the CEO's office that the CEO needs to depart, you know, from our home base and we need to get them to Europe. Mm-hmm. And we, we need to make three or four stops, let's say over the course of a couple of days, and here's the timing we're looking at. Can we do this? So we're looking at, <clears throat> uh, you know, the aircraft we have available. When do they want to go? Are there slots involved? You know, there's a lot of airports, especially in Europe. And I mean, outside the United States where they're very slot heavy or dependent, meaning you not only you can't just say, hey, we're going to file a flight plan and we're going to this airport. You know, we have to in, get in touch with a ground agent there or, or somebody at the airport facility and um, mm-hmm. ask about. Can we even get a slot? Is there is there basically availability in this hour of this time frame that we want to land? Um, so we're coordinating that. We are working with our maintenance team. Uh, if there's you know there's you know just like an airliner uh, or, or you know your Cessna 172 that you go uh, you're maybe training in or whatnot. Uh, each aircraft obviously has to be maintained, and each year there's different levels of maintenance. And sometimes there's uh, like our our aircraft go down once to twice a year for a couple weeks at a time for major, major or major maintenance events, I should say. And so we try to, you know, we, we try to do those events, our maintenance, I should say, uh, maintenance controllers uh, try to schedule those events around times where it's historically quiet. So we know, okay, well, the CEO and the executives tend to take vacation, you know, in the summertime. So we'll kind of work around that. But there are times where there's other inspections that are coming on the airplanes. And so our maintenance team might have flagged it uh, in our schedule. So we get, you know, requests from the CEO and what well, we shoot now we've got every, we've got our aircraft is blocked off for maintenance event during that time. So we have to go back to maintenance and say, can we push this back? Can we do it ahead of time and uh, work with them on that? Um, we're also, you know, is, is our being a corporate uh, flight department, we're a little smaller. So again, this is more unique to the corporate world, but we're also the ones that are doing the staffing of the pilots. So when these trips come in, we're the ones going through and, and we're putting our, you know, we're the ones that are scheduling or crewing, if you if you will, the uh, the pilots uh, for these trips. And if sometimes we need two to three pilots, we'll have to add more pilots. I mean, we choose our minimum, obviously, but some trips require three. And then there are trips where we have to do a crew swap. You know, if we're going to certain places, like when we go to India from our home base, uh, we have to make a stop for fuel uh, somewhere in Asia before we can continue to India. Well, that requires a crew swap because our crew that leaves from our home base, you know, if we're going and we're doing a, a flight, you know, we're basically the, we're we're not spending the night in Asia. We're continuing, you know, the, the CEO wants to leave from our home base and go right to India. 
they know that there's a crew swap, but they want to continue flying. They don't want to stay in Asia for 12 hours to wait for our pilots to sleep. They want to keep going. So that means we have to put pilots and a flight attendant out ahead of that to be in Asia ready to go to meet the airplane for the fuel stop and then continue the airplane on. So uh, looking at our availability for crew and like I just mentioned, flight attendants, uh, we staff the flight attendants. Um, so we're ensuring, obviously, that our pilots are, are trained, they're current. Um, again, and, when, and we're unique in, in our field, or I should say at our department, that we do a lot of we do a lot of stuff in house that a lot of departments don't. So when it comes to running flight plans, you know, generating and filing those flight plans all around the world, we're doing that in house. A lot of operators will be looking to a service provider, as they call it, like a Jeppesen or Air Routing Universal, a company that has more experts on hand to kind of generate those flight plans and get permits for you and whatnot. We're doing all that in house, which is two people. So it adds even more a layer onto that cake of. Yeah what we do. And one thing I didn't, I, I, one of the other tasks that we'd be looking at when we get a trip, especially to Asia or to Europe is uh, we're generating a flight plan ahead of time to see what's the flight time. Cause our executives, you know, the, the assistants and whatnot, they, you know, they want to know, Hey, if we leave it, our home base at this time, what time are we going to get to London? What time are we going to get to Frankfurt and, and all that. So we have to generate a flight plan and, and a pretty valid route to say, okay, well, this is what we're looking at for a flight time. So if you depart our home base at this time, you're looking to land at London at, you know, 11 in the morning or something. Yeah. Um, so we're going back and forth with them on that. Um, you know, there's, we're, we're checking billing, you know, we're going through invoices of past trips we've done. Okay. Um, you know, so there, there's a lot that, that yeah. goes into a day and, and just, right. you know, one trip. That's just, that's the small percentage of what we'd be working on. Well, I was going to say, you, you threw like a lot of detail out there. And, you know, one thing just to wrap it all up and package it to somebody that, that strikes me about your capacity as a corporate flight, you know, planner, dispatcher, et cetera, um, is that, you know, a couple of things. I mean, you have like, like a long list of bullet points of things that you have oversight over, which is a contrast to maybe like an airline dispatcher that is only just tasked with like, you know, hey, you do, you know, a couple dozen flights a day. And it's like the, the level of. I shouldn't say the level of responsibility, but just the, the items that they individually are tasked with looking out for. So you're like a tailored, specialized, really professional that does this work for the corporate flight side. And you know, like I said, it's just, I think it's a contrast to, you know, and you could elaborate maybe a little bit more on this for the folks, Drew, because you've, you've kind of, we're talking about two different career paths here. We're talking about a corporate dispatcher, then we're talking about an airline dispatcher. And maybe, um, I don't know, is there anything you could say about you know, the, the airline dispatch job specifically that you would want to share? That's yeah. And it, really. oh, <clears throat> sorry about that. Yeah. I, I, you know, well, it's funny because inside of corporate, you then got like the fractional and the charter. And so, you know, if you, for most people out there, I'll, you know, they know net jets or flex jet, a mm-hmm. uh, big, uh, it's kind of like an airline for corporate aircraft, you know, private aviation, but it's, it's run like an airline basically. And so, you know, the dispatchers that would do something at, in, in that side of things uh, at uh, their home office, like for NetJet's example in Columbus, Ohio, they have a lot of departments to handle kind of what we do as one person. So yeah. they'll have someone that's just generating a flight plan and, you know, they've got a separate person that does meteorology. They have a separate person that's just doing, you know, crew staffing in hotels and, um, you know, other people that are just client services that when you have their trip requests come in, they're putting it all together and then they're handing it over to like a dispatcher or a flight planner. And I mean, so there's different levels of different departments that do a lot of different things. And, and that kind of mirrors into, I guess, what the airlines do. And so for the airlines, it's kind of the, it's kind of like what I just mentioned for NetJets where you have a dispatcher that's, that still handles a lot of kind of those, it has to deal with a lot of the same issues or departments that we do. But for them, it's, there's somebody at the airline that's a maintenance controller and that is working on, you know, the, 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 the issues with a specific aircraft may have. And then there's somebody that's staffing the pilots. And if there's an airplane that cancels or there's really bad weather, then that crew staff, those, those individuals at uh, crew scheduling are then working on scheduling pilots to the flights that haven't canceled and re- rerouting air, you know, rerouting crew and, mm-hmm. Um, there's ones that are specific to just flight attendants and whatnot. And then there's just dispatchers that are handling really just the flight planning, looking at the weather and, you know, they're working with maintenance and stuff, but they're really, their focus is a lot, they're a lot more focused on just generating flight plans. Um, and they might have a larger list of airplanes, but so 
it is, it's, it's very broad. I think in the general scheme of, of dispatching in, in aviation, everyone's got the same concerns. It's just depending on where you're at in the industry, yeah. you might just be handling different things and the tasks that you, that you, there might be some tasks, I guess that you're either doing like in corporate or you're handing it over to somebody else, like maybe more in the airlines. Right. So hopefully that kind of yeah, gives and, you a and, big and picture just, there, I guess. It does. And listening to all that, and just if I could package it up into the fewest amount of words, it's like you are extremely specialized by nature of the fact that you work for a, you know, this individual corporate flight department that just has a couple of their own, you know, aircraft. And so you're, it's a lot more personal, personable of a job or personal, let's say, of a job for you. And then you could kind of step up of what you described there. You got different levels, the fractionals, other means, you know, other places where that own airplanes and like the airlines up at the top is it's pretty general, you know, when you get up to that level, as far as, um, just, like I said, the, the, the level of, uh, individual personal amount of responsibilities that fall on you as an individual, you know, or is that the other folks, once again, I, I think I'm kind of more as part of a very big team where it's like in your right. job, like you're kind of like, you're one of the only few team members <laughs> that, that has a lot of responsibility, yeah. basically all I'm trying to say. And I'm not saying that, any one way is better to go or anything like that. I mean, they're, they're both phenomenal career tracks, but um, in that, this actually brings up one important thing that I think people might want to know about as well, as far as it relates to the schedule, because you being a corporate person, like you, you kind of have to have a little bit more availability to be there when the owners and the company needs you. Whereas the airline people, I think they, they go in, they have a shift that's scheduled out, you know, maybe a month in advance or whatever. And it's like, you go in, you do your hours, you go home, that's it kind of thing. But you're, you have a little bit different, you know, because of that level of responsibility. Like, so that that's just one thing that I would stress to folks out there that are listening to this. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, Drew, but it's just, there's a contrast there. What kind of lifestyle that you're okay with, or that, you know, it's just something, I think a big part to know about, you know, if you're trying to decide on track A or B, right? Yeah, I think you hit it on the nail, <clears throat> the, head, the nail on the head, I should say, that in, in the airlines, you know, you, you have your day, and it could be really long and exhausting, you know, severe weather, blizzards, you know, major uh, systems shut down, I mean, you know, airlines, sometimes their computers go down, and it cancels hundreds of flights, and so your day is really crazy, and, but the good thing is, the 99% of the time when you, you know, shut your computer down for the day in that position, you know, and you get in your car and you head home, you're done for the day. You're done to your shift, your next shift for us. Um, we, we, you know, we, we, cause it's just us, it's myself and one other person. Um, you know, we're now we, we do rotate who's on call 24 hours a day, but we have to have somebody on call 24 hours a day because, you know, there could be an emergency or something happens that we need to get an airplane getting ready and get crew in gear to get to the airport and whatnot. Um, or if it's the case that we have a trip, you know, in progress, uh, like to the kind of the examples I showed earlier, I mean, we we're mentioning earlier, you know, if we're in Europe or Asia, you know, it's, you know, we're, we're sitting down for dinner, maybe here in, you know, in the West Coast in California, but the airplane where the airplane's at is, it could be early morning somewhere and they're getting ready to you know, fire up and continue on somewhere in Europe or something. So, yeah, um, yeah we have to be, we are more, you know, we, and again, we, we work a really good schedule to make sure that we're not burning out, yeah. <laughs> you know, that that's important that you have more of a, a work, you know, you got to get your job done, but you also, you know, you got family or you got friends and you got to have your downtime. So we balance it out. Yeah. But again, yeah, there's more of a, there's more of an on-call 24 uh, seven aspect for us. Yeah. that you, you know, like you said that where we have to manage or kind of be ready to manage and monitoring things at, at certain times okay yeah all right very insightful all right let's see next question i had for you um, if you could just say it in like a in the most simplest terms like one to two sentences if you had just one piece of advice that you could give to anybody considering this career track what would it be it, probably you know don't give up I mean, it's I, I could probably sit here forever and come up with many, but I think that was the first thing that came to my mind is it's 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 hard, you know. It's it's aviation can be a tough industry, but uh, you know, in the, in the road to get certain places in the industry, I mean, most places in the industry can be really hard. But uh, you know, don't don't give up. I mean, like in, with anything in life, you know, you got to put the work in, you know, to get the results, and you know, it's it's no different in aviation. So. If you have the goal and if, you know, if your goals change, you know, be easy on yourself. Okay, well, maybe I want to do something else and be open to that. You know, I mean, if you want to be a pilot, be open to 
to being a mechanic or, you know, to being a dispatcher or, um, you know, things may change for you down the road. You know, there some medical things or family obligations or whatever, or like I said, interests change. So, you know, and again, you you may, something that you thought when you were 15, you know, the goal you had or the uh, interest in aviation may change to when you're 25 and, you know, it takes you down a different path, whether it's in or out of aviation and, you know, just be open to that and, and, uh, but stick with it and don't give up. Yeah, absolutely. That's great advice. And you, know, you, you hit a lot of, a lot of really important stuff there. And I've had very similar talks with other folks that, you know, their, their careers just taking them to different places. And I think for a lot of us, you know, you, you start in one place and you, you don't think or always know where you're going to end up at, but yeah, it's okay to, you know, and the thing I'm always telling you guys and girls out there is it's, it's your life. You're not living it for anybody else. So, I mean, you follow your passions and don't do anything because you think you need to live up to some standard. You think you need to prove something to somebody like you have nothing to prove to anybody and just be yourself and follow where you want to go, and what you want to do. And that's, that's all, you know, one of the yeah. biggest things that I can communicate to everybody watching out there. And you know, I think it's kind of what you're saying here, Drew. So appreciate that. Um, well, the last um, formatted question that I had for you, uh, just can you tell us what is it that you love the most about doing this job as a corporate flight dispatcher? Yeah, I, I think, you know, I think in the corporate world, it's a little different than, you know, like the airlines or the fractionals because we, you know, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty small. And, this is, and you're going to see this with both cor corporate flight departments. You know, you're looking at anywhere from, you know, one to, you know, some corporate flight departments have, you know, up to maybe 10 airplanes. I mean, it depends on the size of the company and whatnot. But no matter what, I think in the corporate world, you know, we get to really know the passengers. I mean, we know, you know, you get to know the CEO, the board members, uh, you know, the other upper level, upper level executives and the admins. And then, you know, the people that work for the executives that are kind of putting these schedules together and whatnot. And uh, in, in addition, you know, you know the pilots, you know, the flight attendants. And I think there becomes a level of more of a level of trust, maybe respect mm -hmm. and personality to it, you know, because when you're in an airline, you know, no offense. I mean, I am I, I, I kind of have the appeal. I, I get the appeal of the airlines as a kind of for what I do in flight planning and whatnot of large fleets. And, you know, you're moving 50, 60, 70 airplanes around on your own, you know, on your shift. Whereas I think with us. You know, we're, we're not moving as many airplanes, but, you know, it's a personal thing. When I'm forecasting weather and looking at turbulence and stuff, I know the passenger getting on there. I know what he does for our company. I know the, you know, billions of dollars and in revenue that he's in charge of uh, for, for the company that I work for. And, the, you know, the asset that you're moving and the pilots, they're strapping themselves into that cockpit. You know, when I brief them on turbulence or thunderstorms, like, you know, I'm, I'm looking at it more of like, I know these guys. I know their families in some aspects. And... Okay. It adds even more. Not like you care more, but you just you you. It's just like I said. It's they they get to know you and that they they trust that you know when they're making their decisions and and whatnot. You're giving them the information and you know whether it's weather information or routing information or you know information at the FBO where they're going to help them when they land to know what kind of services or where to park on the airport. You know, there's a there's like I said, it's a level of trust that you build that's that's you really won't find probably at an airline as much you will to some degree but i think it yeah. it's a lot more focused in the corporate side so I, I think i enjoy you know i i enjoy that and i work for a company that's very free i mean they're very open to continuing education and they've sent me to training and conferences you know aviation conferences and whatnot so you know you get to meet other you know colleagues in the industry and go have drinks at night and and you know get to see you know travel cool places and you know fortunately for my company as well we get to jump seat on our aircraft uh, on occasion. And I mean, even if we request and say, Hey, can I hop on a trip and ride on the jet somewhere for them? You know, the company, they look at us as an asset and it's a good experience. And we're another set of eyes in the cockpit and, uh, you know, getting to, to kind of sit there with the pilots. Um, it's, it's really cool, you know, and again, the pilots, you know, they like what we do, they trust us and they like having us there. Um, so I think for me, that's, it really makes the job fun. I mean, it really, it may, and it, it makes it a career. Yeah. It makes it fun. And, and, you know, I, I've taken, I've learned a lot and I, I, I take a lot away from what I do. And I think I have a lot of respect for what I do uh, in that regard. So I hope that answers yeah, no, the long I, way of getting right to your question. It so. does. And it says you it just, you know, to tying it all together um, in my mind, as I comprehend what you, a lot of what you just said, it's just, you know, that, that tight knit 
almost like family like element that you're able to have in your job there or something that like that means a lot to you and that's that's phenomenal to have those relationships and 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 I can back you up and just say that you're absolutely right you know in the the air carrier world like for the most part like you're you know you're kind of just a number in a very big ocean of of an operation which like I said there's there's no right or wrong between those two extremes but it's just it's interesting to consider those differences and and it's something to think about you know, once again for anybody that's trying to figure out where they want to go in their career so with that being said, Drew, that's all the the, um, the five questions that I had for you. So I just wanted to, to give you an opportunity to open up the floor. If there's anything else that you think that somebody that's considering this career should know about or you want to convey to them, I just wanted to give you a chance to, to uh, say anything you want, basically. Yeah, um, you know, I, I probably, I mean, I think I touched on it earlier, you know, when I talked about, you know, going for your goal and whatnot. And, um, you know, I, I think probably when this interview is going to come out the industry is definitely and i mean obviously the world but i mean obviously the airlines and, and even corporate and the fractionals to some degree have taken a big hit and i'm speaking of course to the covid 19 you know the pandemic around the world and um i think just that it's hitting it's hitting a lot of companies hard again airlines and, and whatnot as well i mean especially hard actually for airlines and travel but uh you know, so don't, and if, if currently, if, you know, if someone's out there geared or trying to go into aviation and they're getting steered away from it because of this, if it's because of, you know, hopefully it's because of, well, maybe I want to do something else and it steers you to a different path in your life and that's great. But I just hope that the fear of the state of the industry, you know, because things rebound, we saw this and, you know, the recession in 2008, 2009, we saw this after the unfortunate acts of 9-11, um, I mean, going back to the fuel embargoes of the 70s and the uh, regulation in the airline industry in the 80s. So the industry goes through its, its cyclical nature, it's just like many things. And, um, you know, stick with it. You know, don't, you know, we're a lot of us, we're in this together, you know. And if you become a part of this team, you'll be welcomed into the family and you'll be a part of the team and we'll weather the storm as we always do, you know. So I think that's about the only thing I could really say. And uh, if anybody, you know, I mean, you want to pass on my contact anybody has yeah. wants to talk further dispatch or whatnot I'm, I'm more than happy to uh to help anybody at any time so well i'll tell you what i'll put uh some links down in the description there and you know we'll, we can maybe get an email address or a good way for somebody to contact you that that uh, that is yeah just curious about this this line of uh of a career if they're in, interested so well drew thank you so much for coming on the show here i really appreciate it uh it means a lot to me so um thanks again Take care and we'll we'll talk soon, okay? Take care, everybody. Thanks, man. All right. Talk to you later. Okay.